Hey friends, welcome back to another Hot News. It's a good Monday morning. Hope you all are doing well. We're gonna get right on into it after I tell you about today's video sponsor. It's brought to you by us and our merch. I'm not wearing it because we don't sell it in South Africa because uh, it's through Teespring and they only do the US and the EU. Anyways, we've got the It Just Works shirt. This shirt is Ray Trace. This pillow is Ray Trace. This mug is Ray Trace. If you want things just working in your life, if you want an actually Ray Trace life, because we know you do, I know you sit behind your little computer screen wondering what you could have made of your life. And you know what? How much of your life do you not want Ray Trace? Because now you can finally have it. You know you're worth it. Come on, take the step, take the leap. I'm done with this joke. Anyways, check out our merch in the video description in case you wanna. You good, bro? I'm good, bro. <laughs> So with that out of the way, I just want to bring up what I mentioned in Saturday's hot news about the whole AMD kind of releasing cards at prices that weren't the price that they indicated. It appears, at least from all of your comments, that that was only the case in the United States. That whole oopsie doopsie of them saying the MSI Airboost Vega 56 was on sale for $280, but not really on sale. That was a US only situation. It does look, at least according to your comments, that uh, UK, Germany, basically all of the EU, is that what it's called? I was gonna say UN. All of the EU has prices that are approaching that and make it a much better buy than the 1660 Ti, which makes a whole lot of sense, but it also appears, at least based on what I could gather from what you guys said, is that those prices were like that anyways prior to uh, the release of the 1660 Ti. So either way, AMD made a big deal out of it, especially for that new egg link, which was completely crap. It just wasn't on sale for that price. And so, uh, yeah, gosh dang it, AMD. But then also it looks like people in the EU are having a really great price on the Vega 56. Anyways, I just wanted to bring that up before we jump on into today's hot news. So you guys know the whole situation behind the, the previous one. So now let's talk about uh, people who aren't AMD. Let's talk about Intel. What the frick, Brad? Come on, we all know that's the case. Jeez. So, Intel's 10 nanometers. We've been waiting forever for this. We've been on 14 nanometers for a solid four generations now. We had Skylake, we had KB Lake, we had Coffee Lake, and then we got a Coffee Lake refresh, and it appears finally finally we should be getting Ice Lake, which is based on the 10 nanometer process sometime within the next few months because we had indication from Intel back when they had their like uh, day where they announced architecture stuff. They said that we, it would be expected to see Ice Lake around Q4 of 2019, but it appears that there's new documentation from Lenovo showing that uh, no, we should be getting a 10 nanometer Ice Lake stuff in June of 2019. So this would be one of the very first times that Intel has said they're going to do something and then did it earlier, which is, also known as a reverse AMD. So as was stated by Intel, this looks to be only a mobile solution. In fact, there is already a 10 nanometer i3 chip out of the market. It might have also been with Lenovo, but it was only one one CPU. This is supposed to be their new 10 nanometer CPUs based on Sunny Cove plus the new Genelet of Graphics, which is supposed to be pretty good. The Iris Plus 640, which we already got leaked benchmarks for in the previous episode of Hot News. So all indications actually seem like Intel is actually ready to bring out some sort of 10 nanometer CPU, even if it's just in the mobile variety. If they could get ahead on the mobile, then that actually could mean that they might be bringing it out to desktop much sooner than we think. So we'll get yet another Intel launch year on year. That would be fantastic. I doubt we'll see it anytime near Computex, but it would be impressive if by Christmas or holiday season this year that it could actually upgrade to a decent new Intel CPU instead of pretty much banking on Ryzen or Zen 2. That would be fantastic because that means that we would actually get really good freaking competition from both Intel and AMD at the same time. I'm kind of excited for this news. Obviously, there's a whole lot that we still need to see, but 10 nanometers from Intel might actually come out a few months early. Fantastic. And then also at Mobile World Conference, Intel announced an acceleration card for 5G. That, cool. <laughs> I, I mean, there, there's the conspiracy theories out there that 5G is gonna give you cancer, and then there's the actual theories out there that 5G is a bunch of crap and we're not ready for it yet, and then it's also gonna be super expensive. I'll just wait until 5G is actually rolled out in South Africa before I give a personal hoot about it, because then I'll actually use it. 2030. All right, South Africa's kind of picked up on its like rollout of stuff, but we do have something to talk about with South African mobile carriers sometime in just a bit. Let's. Later. And then also there was the announcement of Intel Hewitt Lake at Mobile World Conference. This is for all of their FPGA stuff and uh, stuff that's gonna be going into microservers. So nothing that apex gamers, but cool news, Intel actually bringing out the stops 
quite good, heavily, goodly. I hate my face mouth. Your face mouth. <laughs> Shut up. The weirdest part about like all of these bloopers that we leave in, I'm not doing this on purpose. This is it's just so how I, happy. it's just me. And then ICANN has actually said that they are quite concerned about the uh, ongoing and significant DNS attacks that are happening in, on the internet. If you're not familiar with ICANN, they're the internet corporation for assigned names and numbers, basically giving out all of the domain names and all that kind of stuff. Well, it appears that they have been monitoring all of the DNS attacks that have been happening. And it's quite concerning, especially from country to country, not just personal, you know, uh, DDoSs that are happening. And then also at Mobile World Conference, we got news from Microsoft that they're launching the HoloLens 2, which is going to be coming out for $3,500 later this year. It's going to have twice the field of view and it's going to be pretty good. So it's going to be long. What? How much? $3,500. The original one was $1,500. So they doubled the field of view and over doubled the price. And they pulled an NVIDIA. Anyways, there's a whole lot of cool stuff that's going on with the HoloLens. You guys can check it out at the link in the video description if you're interested, interested in any sort of mixed reality headset. I know that I personally am. Not sure I can justify $3,500, especially after I spent $2,600 on a phone that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But we also have news that Microsoft employees are kind of upset about a contract that was just signed between Microsoft and the US Army for using HoloLens for augmented reality training of soldiers. I can kind of understand why people would be upset that this like mixed reality headset would be used in for like war training, but then I can also understand the necessity of trying to create something that would allow soldiers to experience something sort of like battle before it happens. Although as far as what I can gather of the HoloLens, at least the original one, it was not good enough for that whatsoever. But if the new one is, that's kind of neat. And I can see this being a huge help for like actual augmented reality training of people in situations that you can only train for when you're actually in them and you need on the field experience. It would be, it would help, I get it. Definitely help, like I just think people don't wanna, they feel like they're working on something that's gonna be used for war. Oh, I get that, yeah. Definitely. No, I, I can get the conscientious objection, but I can also understand how this would be a fantastic tool for war at the same time. So no, no comment from me on this, but I get it. And then this is the phone that I'm gonna be spending all of my money on, the Huawei Mate X. Holy crap, Samsung, why was your Galaxy Fold such a piece of trash? Huawei showed you up with just in a couple of days. This thing is freaking cool. Everything about it screams I want because of how it folds out, holy Frick. It folds out instead of in like that stupid Galaxy Fold. It actually looks pretty gorgeous. It, oh my goodness, look at that phone. I don't need this. I shouldn't spend money on it. It's coming with the 2480 by 1200 or by 2000 resolution with an eight inch rear panel and then has a 6.6 .6 inch main display. And that's that's actually the biggest selling point for me over the freaking uh, Galaxy Fold because the Galaxy Fold's main screen is a little stubby piece of crap. This one, its main screen is a full screen smartphone screen, but then the actual back screen that it has, because it also has a back screen, is something that looks usable and it's for selfie mode. That's, I'm totally okay with this. Samsung, you got played, homies. Your stuff sucks. Don't buy the Galaxy Fold, buy the freaking Huawei Mate X. Obviously it costs $600 more, but that ain't my concern because hopefully Huawei will be a sponsor of the channel at that point. Probably not. I shouldn't buy this. You're gonna have to slap me. Okay, don't don't allow me to buy this. Okay. Rickus is excited. Oh, uh, nobody should buy this. But at the same time, it's kind of like the original iPhone. People didn't have a use case for it until they actually figured out what they could use it for. We'll see what developments come in the foldable phone market. I know you guys are probably gonna be ranting down in the comments about how it's stupid and nobody needs it, but whatever. I just like to spend money. Not wrong. <laughs> Shut up, Reese. And then Huawei also announced the MateBook X Pro upgrade, which gets some solid improvements, including updating to the latest GPU, which is the GeForce 250, as opposed to the MX150. It's gonna get have an eighth gen i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and up to a terabyte of storage. So that's actually a pretty impressive for something that is supposed to be a replacement for the MacBook Pro on Windows side of things. I've heard really great things about the MateBook. The MateBook X Pro looks like something that I would actually want to grab for this office. Anyways, let's move on into, uh, let's talk about the Nintendo Switch. So, some peculiar news. If you haven't heard, you can actually hack the Switch. In fact, we have a Switch that we've hacked for a video that I'm working on with overclocking the Switch. Uh, should come out this week. But then, we also have news that Android is unofficially coming to the Nintendo Switch, and Android Q being it. 
uh, being the version that's coming out. It looks like they have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and the Joy-Cons working currently, but GPU support is something that hasn't happened. The SD card slot and apparently USB docking uh, not working at this point either, but it's a pretty early version of Android on the Switch. Pretty exciting. Uh, let me know if you guys want us to check it out in a video in addition to the Switch overclocking that we'll be doing. So let us know and we'll, we'll check it out. And then also Gigabyte had a gigantic motherboard, the C621 Aorus Extreme. Obviously this is kind of like the uh, Asus one, the Dominus Extreme. Uh, this is for Intel's new Xeon with 28 cores that, or was it 28? Yeah, 28 cores that can overclock really well as long as you have a nice chiller, that kind of stuff. And then Crucial, this is something that I actually want to buy. They're they're announcing the new BX500 SSD. They're, the range is going to have everything that you need, but for one terabyte of storage, you're getting $120. That's crazy. It's just a SATA SSD, two and a half inch, 540 megabytes per second read and 500 megabytes per second write for $120, one terabyte. That's freaking insane. I love this. I want this. Link in the video description if you want to buy it on Amazon, affiliate code, kickback, give us money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then LG G8's uh, kind of disappointing flagship has some cool biometric features. So with the fingerprint detection that they're actually using, they use an infrared camera that allows them to see your veins. And so they do something called vein mapping to check you out and make sure that you're the person that's supposed to be unlocking this phone. Another creepy way that people can invade my privacy by mapping parts of my body that I didn't want exposed. Hey mom, there's something in the back room. <laughs> Hope it's not the creatures from Oppo. They unveiled their 10 times lossless zoom on a camera at Mobile World Conference. This is insane. It's going on a 48 megapixel Sony sensor, 120 degree wide angle sensor, and a telephoto camera, which allows it to offer a focal length of 16 to 100 and freaking 60. That's insane. And then you add a digital zoom and that's 20 times, but it's supposed to be like, this is fantastic tech in a phone. That's amazing. It honestly seems like the companies that are super innovating right now are like Oppo, Huawei, um, Xiaomi. Eh. What, what'd they do? I, I thought they were just like the budget version of Huawei. Yeah, but it's like flagship specs for next to nothing. Okay. I honestly, it looks like most of the Chinese companies are the ones that are actually coming out with features that people want, as opposed to Samsung and iPhone, which are just trying to fight each other, but then losing the battle of the entire globe. I don't know, that's just me. And then we also got the Nokia PureView 9, which has five back cameras in the flash right there. I have no idea what that freaking thing is for. So quintuple cameras, 12 megapixels, F1.8, two of them are color, and then three of them are monochrome. I have no idea what that frick that thing is for. What the heck is that? They don't list it. It's only gonna be $700, that's not bad. Snapdragon 845, that's pretty cool. And then Corsair has announced their Dominator RGBs, which uh, discussion that we had with our uh, mate Ashley, who's part of the UFD deals team, he's talked about how like Dominator shouldn't have RGB. I kind of agree with him. Vengeance Pro for RGB, Dominator for sleek and sexy. Like Dominator RGB, it's it looks okay-ish. Like this this video right here from Guru3D. I don't like that at all. Like the RGB, the light's fine, but it just, no. Like it ruins what I loved about Dominators. It just, it has the Dominator name and none of the, uh, the sleek classiness that they're supposed to come along with. Anyways, let's talk about uh, sleek classiness, which is into the Spider-Verse, since Spider-Man actually won an Oscar yesterday for the best animated film. Well done, still have to see it. Kind of excited, but yeah, 2018 was the year of Spider-Man. It was crazy. We got great Spider-Man games. We got great Spider-Man movies. It was all a lovely experience for everybody who loves Spider-Man. And Spider-Man died, in case you haven't seen Infinity War yet. I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> the accent. But really, what I don't feel so good about is a local mobile telephone provider here in South Africa known as Vodacom. They're also in other parts of the world anyways. They suck and I don't like them because they're gonna be charging up to 50 Rand for you to roll over data that you've already paid for. This was in discussion by them a while ago that they were gonna allow mobile data to roll over, but now you have to pay depending on how much data you have left over. If it's up over a gigabyte, you're gonna pay 50 Rand, which to be fair, is only like $3. It's not a huge amount of money, but it's the principle of the matter that really sucks. Like this is, this is messed up. Like they're conforming to a regulation, but at the same time, they're being gigantic buttholes about it. Make it free. Vodacom, this isn't okay. Not at all. 
Like, you're providing a service for something I already paid you for. It literally cost you nothing for me to use my data. That's like, it's nothing. Limit my bandwidth. Don't limit my data usage. That's not how freaking internet tubes work. There's a certain size of the tube, not how much can go through it. It's not getting clogged. It's not a drain. This is freaking nonsense. Anyways, big thanks to Jeff over at Critical Hit for uh, writing this article, but uh, I'm viscerally upset. That's gonna wrap it up for Hot News. Let me know what you thought of any and everything that we talked about down below. You excited for Intel's 10 nanometers? Do you care at all about things that are happening in South Africa? Because this is the second time within the last week that we brought up South African specific tech stuff that's going on. Anyways, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget that this video is brought to you by my inspirational speaking and our merch, of course. If you wanna pick up the It Just Works or the Ray Trace merch, do so at the link in the video description. Hit smash on that like button if you enjoyed this video. I don't know why I'm speaking in this accent now. Please get subscribed. Stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. You've just been uh, informed about tech news and hot news. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Bye, Make sweetheart. It stop. <laughs> Make it stop. <laughs> What's in the box?